is very special, special. It is the end of an era as Rakan Tata hands over the reins of the Tata group to Cyrus Mistry, a group that has transformed as India changed. But what has the role of Rakan Tata been in Bombay House? How will he be remembered? And what is the man's legacy? Here's a look at Rakan Tata. <laughs> The Taj Mahal Palace Hotel, two days after the worst terrorist attack India had ever seen. Ratan Tata was among the first to come there after the security forces had cleared the area and over the next few days, he personally oversaw the relief work. For those watching the chairman of India's largest business group, it almost seemed that he and his group would never be able to get back up. The attacks had left a deep scar and the mega acquisitions that two of his biggest group companies had done over the last year and a half had driven a massive hole in its balance sheet. Not a man to show much emotion and someone who prefers to keep a low profile, few realized then that Ratan Tata had not only ensured that every one of the people who worked at his hotel were taken care of. He also set up a trust in a record 20 days to provide for all the victims including the vendors around the hotel and the other sites. It's a tribute to all those who have suffered either through the loss of their lives, through injury. It's a tribute to those who saved many lives. If that was done at a personal level, over the next four years, Ratan Tata proved that he could steer his group through the worst storms and leave behind an empire he would be proud to hand over. Geeta Piramal was one of the first people to write about him way back in 1996. So what was he like then and why was he in a book of legends? Uh, Ratan Tata is a really interesting person and uh, he clearly had potential. There was this um, hangdog air because there was so much negative being said about him uh, and uh, I just thought that uh, he has a great plan uh, he's thought about it a lot uh, he's worked uh, really hard to get to where he is and uh, if I'm trying to talk about in a book of people, companies who are world class he had to be there While he did make a success of his job over time Rakan Tata's first steps were tentative in 1962, he came back with an architecture degree from Cornell and his first job was on the factory floor of Tisco, then Telco and in 1971, he was given charge of two ailing group companies, Nelco and Empress Mills. One man who remembers the Ratan Tata who walked in five decades ago is Dr. J.J. Irani. Dr. Irani was at Jamshedpur when Tata did his stint there and years later, he was bang in the midst of the very public spat that propels Tata to the top. So what was he like then? He was very mild-mannered. He was uh, also very, shall we say, a shy person and almost an introvert. And he certainly did not flash his, uh, his family name or anything like that whilst he was in Jamshedpur. He was just one of a group of young engineers. My impression of him was that, yes, uh, he certainly has the potential and having the name and knowing that he was close to uh, the patriarch J.R.D. Tata, there was a brighter future for him ahead. But he had to go through a s several stints of very difficult assignments before finally J.R.D. brought him on the boards of uh, the major Tata companies. Ratan Tata didn't have it easy when he was brought into the boardroom in Bombay House. He was up against the so-called Satraps, lording over large chunks of the Tata group, while Ratan Tata was a lightweight, often criticized for what were believed to be his early failures. He was not at all defensive. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, he took on board the criticism, uh, but more importantly, he rolled up his sleeves and got on with the job. Uh, he uh, he said that it was a real challenge fi finding salaries. 
uh, on you know the monthly payments that you need to do. It was a very tough period, but uh, he took a bit positive out of that and said that uh, uh, well, this was my training ground. Um, I learned so much. I learned to stand on my own feet. I learned to uh, deal with challenges, and uh, this prepared me for when the chairmanship actually came. Ravan Tata had to prove his worth. And what really prepared him for the chairmanship of the Tata Group was the way he handled an ugly fight for his job—a fight with a man who, till a few years before, had been J R D Tata's blue-eyed boy. J J Rani, who took over from Rusi Modi, got an insider's view into the fight, and he believes that it was an important turning point for Ratan Tata and the group. I recall those meetings and. Uh... I think if uh, JRD had not given Ratan his full support, things might have become very difficult for uh, Ratan. But JRD did give him full support. There were also other directors, older directors, who uh, in the ta- I'm talking about Tata Steel now, on the board of Tata Steel, who made sure that Ratan was given uh, given his due. Rusi Modi, who had run the company for many years, decades in fact. uh before that obviously saw uh, did not see with favor ratan coming in and he did put up a few objections but uh, with the support of the bombay house uh, ratan overcame all those uh, overcame all those uh, problems and difficulties with great elan elan isn't an adjective often used to describe ratan tata that was better suited to describe his flamboyant predecessor JRD Tata and Geeta Piramal says that in the early years comparisons between the two men were frequently made obviously everybody thought that uh, he's not going to meet a JRD some um, legendary status and uh, as we've seen i mean that um, as he prepares uh, to step down uh, we've seen that he's today a legend um uh, and uh, he's worked very hard at it he has stuck pretty much to the broad principles of what he imagined the tata group should look like in a modern world ratan tata did prove that he was a man to lead the group into a new era and that you could be quiet and still be phenomenally ambitious and audacious more on that when we return